so check it out, guys. Um, yeah, like day three of being snowed in. It's Uncle Larry. Homeschooling, volume 93. My dear friend, the doctor, came and saved me today. He picked me up in this 4x4 four four and drove me to the Publix where I can get uh, some White Mountain bread and some uh, Rolling Rock. So I'm doing pretty good. But uh, I want to say thanks for all the kind words about the... Uh, Dilly's Blues video yesterday, man. Um, really appreciate all the kind words. There was a lot of comments about, um, man, you really know your way around the fretboard and all that, right? For some reason, I was thinking about that this morning. I was laying in bed, and um, I just had this thought. It was a crazy thought. I started thinking about, like, how do I know all that? shit you know how do I know just how to jump around you know like that and I, I just don't it's second nature to me I've been doing it for so long you know and uh, I started thinking about it and I think I, I've actually came up with a uh, a little bit of a system that I could explain it to you guys I mean I don't know it might be bullshit but this could be the most important homeschooling yet as far as unlocking the secret the key I mean besides rolling rock but look, man, here's how I think of things. Um, cowboy chords. I know that seems a bit uh, silly, but think about it. Okay, so like there's there's three major kind of, of big old cowboy chord major chords. I, I, I know there's more, but think about it this way, right? There's that shape. There's that shape. And there's that shape, right? The E, the A, and the D. I know that I realize there's more major chords in the cowboy position, but these are the ones that you can invert up the fretboard, right? So let's just take groups of three strings, like let's say the top three strings, and let's talk about E major, right? You got the cowboy chord down here, right? This shape. And then you've got the next inversion up is the fourth fret, but that's just a D chord, right? And you've got the next inversion up. But what's that? It's just an A chord. Up, you know, seven frets. And then it repeats. So if you think about inverting on three string groups. Sorry, my wife's throwing boxes on here. Okay, now that, 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 just, that doesn't just apply to the top strings. It applies to, to all, all groups of strings. So if you got, let's just say the D, G, and the B. Here's the top string. Now let's go down to the A, D, and the G. So you can go down to the bass strings. I think about, for some reason, I think of the bass strings differently. I don't use those same groups of voicings down here, but there's millions of ways to invert these. There's this. 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 So the, I, I don't think of the three bass strings the same way I think of the other groups. So... major right you can do this for every chord let's go to d right i'm gonna give you give you a minute with your guitar i feel like i'm doing one of those kids shows where you let the kid figure it out for a second i'll, let, I'll give you a minute start with this d chord on the top three strings and then figure out how to invert it all the way up the fretboard i'll give you a second to think about that while i'm uh, testing out my new rolling rock okay you got it so here it is, the D shape, the A shape, the E shape, and then it, and then it starts over. So, you know, to a, to a serious guitar player, this is pretty basic shit, but it's amazing to me how many people don't get this concept. They don't know it. 
I mean, I try, I try to show people licks all the time, and they're like, they're fumbling around like they, they have no idea where these things are on the fretboard. So I know, I can, I can equate it to like chess in the sense that I don't know my, my number squares. Like, you know, if you said brick to A5, I don't know that by memory. I'd have, to, I'd have to think about that. So like memorizing the chessboard grid is the same as memorizing the guitar grid, right? So now the reason I say there's only three cowboy chord shapes that you have to worry about in these inversions is because like for F, for example, F, F can be a cowboy chord, but all an F is is a capoed E, you know, right? Same shape, capoed up, one fret. And then you got this voicing for the cowboy G, right? But really, what that is, is an A, and you got, I suppose you could consider this shape as one of the inversions. I use it all the time, but I don't think of it as one of the three major inversions, you know? You can put it there. Now let's, let's, let's take another, let's take, take another uh, key. Let's do F, right? Top three strings. Invert that up. All three, all three, all four inversions, right? What's next? D. A. And when I say A, I mean the A shape. It's obviously still an F chord, right? Okay. This works for minor chords. F minor, right? It works for major sevens. D major seven. Right? Which is similar to an F minor, F sharp minor. So, and now, when I, when I start, it gets trickier when you start getting in the middle strings, you know? Like, especially when you, got, when you start getting down to A, D, and G, that group. Here's your E, which is just the bottom of this chord, the Beatle chord, you know? They always played their major chords like this. And you got, which is just the bottom of the Hendrix voicing. And then this, right? So these, you just got to know these instantaneously. You cannot fuck around. You have to know these in your sleep, you know, in all keys, right? You have to know them. And, and when you know them all, then it can unlock all these little two and three note shapes that you can use in your soloing, right? I don't know what this, I don't even know what the cage system is. Maybe that's what they talk about it in the cage system. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what any of the systems are, so forgive me if I'm having this stroke of genius with somebody else's idea, but this is just how I think of it, okay? And like, man, um, inverting these chords all over the place. I mean, you take a three, a three note chord recipe and there's a million places you could play it, right? Let's just talk about the key of E major, let's say. You got the root, the third, and the fifth. E, G sharp, and B, right? There's so many places you could grab those three notes. You know? There's a million places. You could be like... You could be like... You could be like, uh, like this. You could be like... There's endless places. Anytime you can grab those three notes together, that's an E major chord. And that works for any chord recipe, right? That's what I'm always talking about when I say jumbling up the the normal patterns and chords. Okay, so. There's no time to even think about that. You just gotta know. That's that's E. These are all E's, right? You just gotta know it. All the possible places you can play them. B major, A, E. Make any sense at all to anybody? It just hit me while I was laying in bed this morning. This is a lesson we need to have on the homeschooling show. So I'm freezing my ass off out here in this garage. It is dead cold out here. I got the heavy coat on. Man, it's cold today in Nashville. 
All right, guys, something to think about, something to practice, all right? I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the show. Bye-bye.